Hi everyone. Uh, so I would like to present uh, quality, how to have uh, quality packages. Um, so uh, I have, uh, I will put um, <clears throat> the URL of uh, of the slide just in case uh, something break with video. So okay, I posted the the slides, um, uh, but here they are. If the video is okay. Uh, so uh, my talk is organized into three sections. First, what I'm talking about when I'm talking about quality, uh, and then how to configure your computer so you can check quality um, of your packages, and then how to configure uh, continuous integration systems so uh, you are sure that uh, all quality checks uh, are okay all the time, even for your contributors. So quality. So what, why, when, and how? What? I'm talking today about uh, quality of behavior. So the application is supposed to do what you want it to do. Um, and for that, we can implement uh, test suites. And I'm also talking about quality of code. Uh, and by that, I mean a lot of um, uh, lintings and things like that. So I will deal with this later. Um, so why? Uh, quality is important because uh, uh, that let tools uh, find bugs for you. So they will uh, highlight uh, problems and, um, and unit tests will uh, make sure that uh, your code is doing what you, uh, what it's supposed to do. Uh, and quality also is its contribution. So if the code is easy to read um, and uh, easy to understand and easy to modify, then it will help uh, contributors of your projects. So it's good to have a, a standard style that everyone understands and that's easy to, to fill with. Um, okay, and also having uh, having the quality uh, tools uh, in place will uh, improve uh, feedback, uh, the feedback loop. So your um, your contributors can uh, get quick feedback on uh, their uh, pull, on their pull requests, uh, so they can modify them immediately without you having to have a look at it first, which can take days. Uh, and also uh, making sure that. Um, uh, for example, that small uh, functions are small, uh, make it possible for users to override part of your application uh, inside their uh, init.el um, configuration file. So when is it important to have quality? Uh, it's not always important. So if you write if you write a script uh, that's going to be executed once and then forget it, and then forgotten, then you don't really care. But uh, usually, if the script is there to to last, then it's good to to have some quality rounds. And also, if you want to submit it on Melpa, uh, then quality is very important because the first thing that uh, Melpa um, reviewers will do is check the quality of your package and give you feedback. And last but not least, it's important to show skills. Um, some companies uh, recruit people and recruit developers only uh, if they are capable of writing good quality code. So this is, uh, by the way, the checklist of uh, Melpa when you submit a new package. And here there are three quality uh, tools uh, that needs to be run on your code base uh, before you submit something on Melpa. And you have to check uh, all the checkboxes. Uh, so in this talk, I will show how you set up those guys. Uh, so, so your package is of high quality. So how? Uh, you should uh, focus on naming. So one very important thing to do is that all the stuff uh, in your Emacs package uh, has, um, uh, has a prefix that is the name of your package. Uh, naming is also very important for others to read, uh, to read your code and to understand. Uh, another important thing is doc strings. So check doc will make sure that your doc strings are okay, uh, respect uh, uh, some standard, and uh, it's a requirement for Melpa uh, to have uh, doc strings. Um, 
uh, as I said, it's good to have uh, small functions so people can understand things better. And because everything is uh, have a doc string, um, then uh, you are obliged to describe whatever you do. And small functions make it possible for others to uh, to um, override in their configuration or for other packages to add uh, advice before, after, and around. Uh, you should write automated tests. So usually it's a uh, unit test, but you also can have integration test and um, UI testing. And uh, package metadata is very important, especially if you plan to push uh, your, your code on Melpa. A very important thing uh, I care about is uh, warnings. Um, for me, uh, warnings should be treated just like errors. Because warnings can show uh, real bugs, that they are important to look at and to pay attention to. But if you accept warning warnings in your code, and then you won't see which warnings uh, are important and which warnings you can ignore. Uh, if you keep ignoring uh, some of the warnings, then the, the good ones might be ignored as well. So my target is always uh, to target zero warnings uh, in my code base, just because if I have uh, no warning on my code and I write something stupid, then I will get one warning and I will be able to focus on it. It's not lost into a notion of, um, of many warnings. Uh, something that can be annoying is a bit is check doc. It has improved a bit uh, recently, but uh, it has a tendency to be quite picky about the doc strings you write. But um, yeah, if you pay attention, then you can write a check doc with um, doc strings without warnings. Yeah, so for me, a warning just like an error. Uh, I won't commit anything that has a warning. It just helped me keep uh, everything clean. Okay. Uh, if you want to have some documentation about um, about quality, especially uh, quality of code, I suggest you read Melpa's contributing.org file, uh, which contains a lot of uh, tips and also um, links to other pages with some details. Okay, so what's the local setup? Uh, so in, I will talk about what to... Um, uh, what to, how to configure your computer so you can check the quality while you write code. So why do you want to set up your computer uh, to check uh, quality problems? You want to find bugs fast while you type. And you also want to share clean code. So two important things, testing behavior and, oh, sorry, quality of behavior and quality of code. So quality of behavior, uh, you have two uh, frameworks, uh, ERT, which is included inside AMAX, and we'll see an example on the next slide, and Buttercup, which is not included, but it's available in Melpa. So those are two test frameworks that will help you write uh, test code to, to check that the behavior of, of your application is what you expect. And then if you want to check for the quality of code, you have check doc, which is uh, included and will check all the doc strings. Uh, you have the byte compiler, which produces uh, warnings, uh, telling you what you have done wrong or what seems wrong in your code base. You have package lint, which uh, at the beginning was uh, meant to check uh, packaging, uh, packaging uh, rules uh, on your code base. Uh, but has no ground into uh, a Nemax Lisp linter uh, with uh, many rules that go beyond packaging. Uh, you have FlyCheck, which doesn't do any check on its own, but will run the, the previous three uh, and will highlight uh, and will highlight your code when you do mistakes. And FlyCheck package is just an integration of packaging of package lint within FlyCheck. So this is an example uh, of an ERT test. Uh, so this uh, ERT framework is included inside Emacs. Uh, you see that I require it on the first line and then on the third line, I create a new test. So this is a unit test, uh, checking that the method uh, libmpdel artist works uh, if you pass it an artist, an album or a song. 
So in all three cases, and that are the last three lines of uh, the slides, uh, we check that the, the result is always the artists. So the, 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 the three variables we will define uh, are the artists first, and then the album uh, uh, with a link to the artists and the song uh, with the name of the song and the link to its album. So those ERT tests are very easy to write uh, and they go a long way towards helping you making sure your code uh, stay the same and you don't introduce bugs uh, again and again on your code base. So I suggest you write uh, ERT tests uh, before or as soon as you write uh, your domain code. And then when you run uh, to, to launch your ERT tests uh, in your Emacs session, you just type meta.xert run tests interactively. It just works. Uh, the other framework is Buttercup. So this is an example of a Buttercup uh, test suite. So Buttercup is not included inside Emacs, but can be unloaded from Melpa. So the, the, the describe line um, uh, gives some context about the test that's going to be written and uh, IT uh, or it uh, gives some uh, sentence explaining these particular tests. So here I'm writing a test for a package I wrote, which is begin end. I'm just saying that um, in begin end, if I go to the beginning of uh, a died buffer, uh, I want to ignore the dot and dot dot uh, lines. So this is basically what the test is doing. So on, on the line begin end died test with buffer, I say that if I have a buffer with dot, 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 dir1 and dir2 uh, files, then I want that the, what I consider the beginning of the buffer should be dir1 and the end of the buffer should be dir2. So I'm, I'm making sure here that I'm ignoring dot and dot dot. So I can write a lot of uh, tests like that. And then when I want to run the test, I can just meta x buttercup run at point. So both frameworks are really good. Uh, I tend to use ERT most of the time. Um, because it's a bit simpler. Uh, I mean, it has less uh, less feature. Uh, and also, uh, it's the only one included inside Emacs. So if at some point I write some code that uh, I plan uh, or that I think might be uh, good for including inside Emacs, I would use ERT. Uh, Buttercup has plenty of features uh, that I really like. So when I need those features, uh, like uh, having spies um, and mocks and things like that, then I would uh, use Buttercup. Okay, and fly check um, is uh, meant to uh, underline uh, the pieces of uh, code that you write that are not good enough. So I use fly check to run the byte compiler, uh, to run check doc, and to run package, uh, package lint while I type. So this is an example of uh, having a fly check configured with uh, uh, with the three tools. So it tells me that uh, so on the on the left you have my my file and on the right you have fly check complaining about three problems. So the first problem is that uh, it's underlined in red and it says that uh, this uh, package navigl is not installable. Yeah. It, because it's a typo, it should have been Navigel instead uh, with a G and L, uh, with a G and E swapped. So thank you for telling me that I did a typo. And then on line 33, the second error is that uh, prefix key doesn't start with the prefix mpdel. Uh, so this file is uh, the mpdel package uh, and everything that uh, the package defines should have the prefix mpdel. So this is not the case on line 33 because I'm creating a new user option, which is called prefix key instead of mpdel prefix key. And on line 43, I have uh, another problem. And this time from the Emacs Lisp byte compiler, which tells me that uh, prefix key, uh, that uh, mpdel prefix key uh, doesn't exist. Uh, so I'm referencing a, a variable that doesn't exist. So I have these three errors to fix. Another example here is uh, uh, from uh, another file. 
So I have this artist name uh, method and three errors in it. So the first error tells me that uh, the function parameter entity isn't referenced anywhere uh, in the code. The second error is from checkdoc and it tells me that uh, ENTTYI, um, oh, sorry, that uh, entity uh, that is a parameter of the function is not referenced in the doc string. So it should be fixed. So the doc string is supposed to reference every parameter of the function. And the third error on the line three uh, is that this ENTTYI uh, isn't, uh, isn't uh, viable or it's, it doesn't know what it is. So it detects when I do typos, which is good because I tend to write a lot of those. Something very important uh, if you want to have this setup is to configure the parameter flight check and the, the variable flight check and actually split pass to the value inherit. Uh, so this is important because otherwise uh, what flight check does is um, start a new Emax uh, and open your file in it and try to uh, byte compile it. But if it, uh, if it can't find the dependencies of your file, then it will complain um, every time you make a reference. So for example, if your package references uh, a magit function, a magit function, then um, uh, it will underline this as red because magit is not loaded in the Emacs that flight check loads. So to make sure that uh, the, the Emacs, uh, the, the guest emax contains the same load pass as the the host emax you have to pass this uh, inherit value so when to run flight check uh, my advice is to only run flight check on your own code so don't try to run flight check uh, on every single um, on every single file or on every single um, text file with a program prog mod on. And the problem is that many, many uh, files um, are, don't, don't have the same um, quality checks that you would like to have on your own code, which means that a flight check will just underline, the, underline everything in the file. And this is very, very annoying to read some code uh, which has underlined everywhere. So I suggest you don't do that. And instead you only start flight check uh, whenever you think, uh, whenever you want the underlined, underlines. So only run flight check on your own code. So for example, you can have a dear locals file uh, in your project so that flight check is run on uh, every prog mode file. Or if you, you may also have it in each file with a local variable. Okay, so this is the end of the local setup, how you would set up uh, your computer to have um, uh, to have information about uh, quality everywhere. Uh, now I'm going to talk a bit about uh, how to set up uh, a remote infrastructure. So for example, if you have your, your code on a forge, uh, such as GitLab, Gitty or GitHub, uh, you want people to be able to contribute to your code easily. Uh, and get quick feedback. So this means that when they open a pull request on top of your code, uh, you want them to get to know immediately if they uh, lower the quality of your code base. Uh, for example, if they introduce a bug uh, and if they make a test fail, or if they don't respect some of the package lint or check doc rules, you want them to have uh, immediate feedback. So, uh, so they don't have to wait for your own feedback to, to fix their code and they can immediately fix it. It's also good to merge only clean code. Uh, so the master branch stays clean and you avoid plenty of uh, fix this and fix that and, uh, and uh, make check doc happy commits that uh, some projects have regularly. You only push into master uh, you only merge into master when uh, when all your um, tools are happy with your code base. 
So you need uh, you need some uh, tooling to launch all the other tools automatically in the continuous integration server. So I listed four here. Uh, Cask is uh, famous, and it can be used for that. Many projects use it. Emacs Packet Checker, as far as I know, is quite new, and it uses the Nix, which is a how some uh, package manager yet yeah, that you should really have a look at. Uh, Emake and Macel uh, share the same philosophy of uh, philosophy of uh, having a make file uh, help your help your work. So uh, I will in the next slide I will present Macel because this is the one that I did, but the other one are worth uh, checking. So uh, the idea of Macel is that uh, with a, a few lines in a make file. Uh, you have uh, you can benefit from a lot. So the idea is that you would like to um, just type uh, make check or make lint or make uh, tests, and uh, you want the you want the tools to do everything you want uh, for you automatically. So you can have uh, this script pushed into a, a continuous integration server. So this is uh, one of my uh, projects. So um, what you can see in the first uh, in the first six uh, lines of this file is some um, make file variables. So the first one uh, is a list of uh, packages that uh, your package depends on, and uh, Macel will make sure to download those dependencies. The second line defines the archives where to find the dependencies. The third line uh, is a list of uh, all the ERT files that you automatically want to run. So all the, the unit tests that you that you wrote for ERT. You have something similar for, um, for buttercup tests if you want. Uh, so in this case, I want uh, test ERT files to be uh, the list of all the EL files in my tests folder. Then on the fourth line, I define lint check doc files. Uh, so I want to run check doc on every EL file uh, at, the, at the root of my project and also on every single ERT file. Uh, okay, that's what the, the fourth line is about. And then the fifth and sixth lines define uh, what to run package lint on and compile on, and uh, the, the Emacs Lisp compiler on. So basically, I want to run check doc package lint and compile on all my EL file in the project. Then there is a macl.mk uh, rule that just uh, tells makefile how to get uh, macl in case it's not already there. Uh, so it's just a, a curl expression to, to download uh, Macel and uh, put it locally. And the final line here is uh, an include uh, that will uh, make all the, the make file rules present in Macel.mk available uh, for this make file. So with this in place, I will, I'm, can just type make check and uh, the lint, uh, the linting and um, tests will run. Um, so this is uh, how you how you set up um, how you set up uh, your make file, and then uh, you need to you need to make sure that on uh, your continuous integration server to have uh, the Emacs you want to test against. Um, so to install Emacs on a continuous integration server, you have uh, several solutions. Here I list four of them. EVM uh, is the, the old one that have been there for quite some time and that has helped a lot of people uh, install many versions of Emacs. Uh, Nix Emacs CI is kind of new and I really like it because it's based on the Nix package manager again that I uh, talked about a minute ago. And then there is a uh, Silex uh, Docker images with uh, Emacs, uh, which are very cool. And uh, and then there is a PPA for Ubuntu, uh, which has the advantage of having uh, ARM builds. So if your continuous integration server runs on ARM, then it's really good. 
so I will demonstrate the use of the three, uh, the last three. So Nix, Emax, CI, Silex, and uh, the PPA. So here is an example, uh, GitHub plus Travis uh, setup. Uh, so the Travis is the continuous integration platform for GitHub, the, at least the, the historical one. Uh, it uses YAML, so you need to have a .travis.yaml file at the root of your project that you push on GitHub. And then this, so this is a YAML file. And the idea here is that uh, I want to run uh, the tests, uh, both linting and, uh, and uh, behavior testing on both Emacs 25 and Emacs 26. So there is this env uh, list, which defines the, the two uh, Emacs targets that I want to run my code against. Then there is this install uh, rule that basically says to install Nix, uh, to, inst to download Nix Emacs CI and run it. So the right Emacs version is installed. And then the script at the end has three lines. So the first uh, is Emacs dash dash version. So I get a log of which uh, Emacs version was used to launch uh, the tests. Then there is the make CI dependencies. So CI dependencies uh, is something provided by Macel that just downloads uh, the, um, the dependencies specified in the make file. So in the previous slide, it was uh, package lint. So Macel will make sure to download package links. But if your package has many dependencies, then this is what will happen. And then the final line is make check. That will just make sure that uh, all uh, the um, linting and uh, behavior tests uh, are run on your code. So that's all that's uh, necessary for to set up GitHub and Travis and to make sure that your package is always of uh, topmost quality. Then the next is uh, GitLab. Um, so GitLab has its own uh, continuous integration uh, system. And it requires a .gitlab-ci.yml uh, file at the root of your project. So it's similar to, uh, to the Travis file uh, that uh, was shown on the previous slide. So here I said that um, I want to run this on uh, Ubuntu latest. And then the next uh, five lines uh, define a, a template. So I want to run the, these, three, uh, these three lines in uh, all builds. And then the next uh, two sections with the test max 25.3 and test max 26 uh, use this template. And uh, so this uses uh, Silex to download to download uh, the right Emacs version uh, using Docker. So this is all that's re required to set up uh, GitLab CI. As you can see, uh, it's it's very easy. So I highly recommend you do something like that for your package uh, to ease your own work and to also ease uh, the work of your contributors. And the final one is uh, Gitty. So I had GitHub, GitLab, and now it's Gitty and Gitty. Uh, uh, with Drone. So Drone is a continuous integration uh, server that runs fine on Gitty. So Drone requires a .drone.yaml file uh, at the root of your project. So it's very similar to what we saw previously. So I won't enter into uh, the details. Just that, uh, just note that here I'm using the um, uh, a PPA to install the right Emacs version on um, on the CI. So here I'm installing Emacs 26 and uh, I'm running the same uh, checks. So this is the final slide of my presentation. Um, there's a lot of tools uh, that uh, I'm using to ensure my packages are of top quality. And I would like to thank everyone who has been involved in uh, any of these tools and everything else that I'm using all the time. Thank you so much. I couldn't do what I'm doing if uh, you were not here to, to write all these uh, very nice tools. Thank you so much. And on the right, uh, there are three uh, three uh, projects, uh, Begin End, Libel Couch, Libel Couch, and uh, Libem Pidel. 
which are hosted on three different uh, platforms with three different uh, continuous integration servers. So you can check uh, what I'm doing there and um, copy paste whatever you want. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, Damien. Thank for... you for that. Uh, do you want yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Sasha. Go ahead. Oh, thank you for the for the presentation. If you want to pick an EmacsConf questions, there are a few people who have questions for you. Uh, you can either read them sure. yourself, or if you want, I can read them for you. Yeah, please. Uh, well, yeah, I will. I will read EmacsConf question. Do you see my uh, riot? So which one? Okay, we'll start with the, the last because it's the easiest to find. In GitLab CI, you use Ubuntu latest as image. I find uh, latest sooner or later causes unexpected problems. Perhaps you could Nixify the base image too to get more immutability. Yeah, I agree. Immutability is really good. Uh, so the idea is um, the idea of immutability is that each time you run something, uh, it's in exactly the, the setup that you want, and uh, nothing has changed uh, in between. So it's a really, really good, and uh, that's why I love Nix and NixOS so much. So if you don't know about these two projects, then it's it's really good, and you should have a look at both. Um, uh, see, I see. Uh, okay, then the question is nice to see the Nix package manager being put to good use in CI systems. Uh, any CI systems supporting Gwix yet? I have no clue. Uh, Gwix is a bit similar to NixOS, OS, uh, except that it's made by GNU and uh, it has some uh, really nice uh, scheme syntax, which is uh, Lisp. So you might like it very much, but um, I think that for for Gwix they implemented some uh, some CI for their own use, but uh, I'm not sure how I could use that for for Emacs. Um, um, and there are plenty of text. I'm not sure what is the question. Okay, so so there is for Elisp is Melpa standard the accepted one? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't understand the question. Can you? Uh, okay, I see the the message from Sasha. Yeah, if you could summarize the question, it would be great, Sasha. Thank you. Uh, okay, for Elisp, is Melpa standard the accepted one? The accepted one, what? Sort of the uh, you know is is that the is that the coding standard we should all aspire to, or are there other coding standards that you'd like to also recommend? Yeah, in the so in the contributing.org file on Melpa, uh, there is a, a link uh, to uh, a Max uh, coding style, uh, which I highly recommend. Uh, but uh, just read uh, Melpa's contributing.org uh, file, and you will see everything you need. It's really really good. Uh, any other question? Um, That's not very good for that for now. Um, any like you've got, if if anyone else has any questions, you've got ten minutes. Let's fill that in, or you, we can play some of the the um, lightning talks that we missed last time. So last chance questions. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Emacs is great. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Damien. Bye. Okay.